Hey guys, welcome to a new video and my second try at making 18th century stays. If you missed the previous video, I am currently making an 18th century dress completely out of IKEA fabric and I am using the Simplicity American Duchess Outlander pattern for it. The last step in my undergarment construction is the final version of the stays. I have made one mock-up so far, which has been the only corset type garment I've ever made and it came out really big. I think the construction went really well but the final result was way too big. So what I've decided to do today is to go down two sizes. So I'm going to make a size 8. We'll just see how that goes and I'll troubleshoot as I go if it turns out to not work the way I'd hoped. So another thing I decided, I made my mock-up out of this undyed cotton that they sell at IKEA. Love this fabric. I think I'm going to use this for my lining on this project. But for the outside of my final space, I think I'm just going to use this fabric. This is the fabric that I originally bought for my dress. So for the actual 18th century gown that I'm going to make. But this is a really thick and sturdy, heavy fabric. I'm pretty sure this is meant for upholstery. <laughs> That means it's fairly stable, it is sturdy, it doesn't stretch a lot, I mean it barely stretches at all. It is pretty much a canvas and I think that that would work really well to make the corset. I just have to decide whether I want to do only my outer layer in this or my outer and my inner layer. I think if I do both layers in this fabric the whole thing will come out much firmer and more supportive. So I might just do that, just do the outer and inner layer out of this fabric and then just use this undyed cotton, which matches it perfectly, by the way, which is fantastic, for the lining. So that's what I'm gonna do. Since I've already made this pretty much on camera, I'm gonna go through the first couple of stages fairly quickly in this video and we will just pick back up where I stopped with my mock-up so that you don't have to watch me making the same thing twice, basically. Because there are a bunch of steps that I skipped in my mock-up uh, just so that I could get an idea of the fit. And we're going to do all of that today. I'm going to end up with a perfectly finished stay pair of stays <laughs> at the end of this video. Fingers crossed. So yes, I'm going to go back to my pattern, cut out a much smaller size and get started. Alrighty, I have my halves of stays pretty much finished and this is where I'm going to do stuff that I haven't done yet and also I'm gonna go off book a little bit because the pattern now calls to make this again out of um, the lining fabric. However, given that this comes out flat, spreads out flat. Instead of cutting out four pieces, I'm gonna just trace this whole thing so that my lining comes out in one piece. I think that will be much more comfortable to wear and will reduce a little bit of bulk around these already very bulky seams. So I'm gonna do that and then I can start attaching the lining to my bodice and after that comes boning. But we're not there quite yet. So I'm gonna start by tracing my pattern onto the lining fabric. It is lined and looking great, if I may say so myself. I'm very, very happy with where this is going so far. I kind of 
tried it on for size and it looks much better it definitely doesn't come down to the center either front or back so that's fantastic now the next step is um, for me to bind the edges or at least to bind the bottom so to do that i'm going to use this bias tape which i think will go really nicely with the prints on the stays pretty much everyone who has made this or who i've read reviews of um, says that it's better to just do this by hand it's quicker it's easier and you'll get better results that way so i think i'm gonna go ahead and just attach my bias tape by hand i uh, save myself the trouble of trying to do it by the machine probably gonna take a while hand stitching let's get to it <laughs> Yesterday was challenging. <laughs> I feel like I didn't get anything done, but everything I did was just so time consuming. But I have my half of stays beautifully bound with that gorgeous yellow bias tape. And then I have the other half bound in white because of course I didn't have nearly enough of the yellow bias tape to do everything. So they are now two different colors. <sighs> I have plenty of the white binding, so I'm just gonna have to um, finish the rest with the white binding and I will fix this. I will go, go back and bind this in white as well, but I'm just gonna do that after I finish this video because this needs to go up at some point and this, all of this is extremely time consuming. Like, I worked all day yesterday and all I did was line the pieces on the inside and bind the tabs. <sighs> I did it by hand and I think, I must say, I think it looks fantastic. Um, I did a pretty neat job, especially considering this is the first time I'm doing it. I think it looks great. So I'm happy I hand stitched this and I will definitely hand stitch the top as well, but I need to keep going. So the next step is to insert the boning. And once again, I followed your guys' advice because many people said that what I did with the last one isn't gonna work, meaning <laughs> I had these zip ties, these heavy duty zip ties, but some of them weren't long enough. So I duct taped two together to make them long enough. And yeah, uh, people agreed that that just wouldn't work probably. So I went ahead and I bought some boning. Now, this was actually really hard to find. I was able to find flat steel and spiral steel boning in, in, in many different places, like even locally to me. But synthetic boning, just made of plastic, very hard to find. But I found it and I have it here. So I think, I, I'm just not sure I have enough of it. It was pretty expensive. I'm gonna start by just cutting out the long boning channels or trimming this to the length of the long boning channels and I'm gonna try and use maybe the zip ties wherever they do actually fit so that I'm sure that I have enough of this but that is the next step so that's what I'm gonna do now I just hope I have something that can cut this I'm probably gonna go back to those wire cutters that I used last time that worked pretty well and I'm gonna have to sand down the edges so that they don't poke through my stays. So that is what we're gonna do today. And then I really, really hope I have enough time to bind the top edges as well, which should be much faster because, you know, those tabs were a lot of work. This is pretty much just a straight edge. Bind that and then the last step is to do the grommets. <sighs> Fingers crossed I get there today. There's a lot more to do still, but this is the last day I have to film this. So <laughs> I need to do it. Okay, let's get started. I definitely had enough boning to do everything that I had to do so I decided to just use it up 
to have as much strength in these stays as possible. So I replaced the zip ties with the plastic boning um, in the places where I felt it was most necessary, where it needs the most kind of sturdiness. So that would be here around the bust, the front and the back, obviously, where the ties are going to be. And yeah, it is now nice and firm. I'm very excited to see how this will wear. But the next step is to baste along the top to close it off and then to finish it with these... can't find my words. Bias tape. <laughs> I need to bind it with bias tape. Yes, that's what I was trying to say. So that is the next step. A lot more hand sewing again. It's gonna take a while, but I'm on the right track. Almost done. Okay, my stays are all bound, all lined, all ready, except for one final thing. Grommets. Eyelids. I have never done this before and I am a little bit nervous. I am also not entirely sure I have the right tools. So I bought this kit that's supposed to help me with that. It comes with a little applicator thing. I need a hammer to use it and I need something to make holes with. Thing is, I only have this. We use this to punch extra holes in belts, but I'm not sure it's gonna work on fabric. We'll have to see. So before I, you know, completely ruin my actual stays, I'm gonna take the mock-up and try on this. <laughs> just to see how this works and if I can actually do it. Let me bring you up a little bit closer and we can do it together. All right, step one. I need to find a bigger one of these. I think this one should work. I think that's the biggest one. To make a nice and big hole, hopefully. Oh, I feared this would happen. That did absolutely nothing. Oh no. How am I gonna do this then? How am I gonna make holes? What am I gonna do? And also, does it need to be the exact right size? What happens if I just put on the grommet and then poke a hole through later? It's probably not gonna be very good looking, but you know what, let's just, let's try that. So that I, at least I have <laughs> done it once. So, okay, you take your tool and then the ring goes on the spiky bit. And then this thing goes on that. And this is probably supposed to poke through this hole now. Okay, and then you hammer this down. That did not work. Let's try again. Guys, I can't do this here. This makes way too much noise. I live in an apartment. I, I, can't, I can't do this 30 times. It's not even working anyway. Not sure why, it's just not. Welcome to not my house. <laughs> okay. I'm in a place now where I can hammer down on stuff without feeling guilty. So I give it another try. I think I put the thingies on backwards onto the applicator because I got a bit of a better result second time I tried. But I, I want to do another one. <laughs> I want to get it right before I cut into my stays. I think I have plenty of them because I need 30 and I have 50 of them here so I can easily use another one okay i don't have anything unfortunately to make the holes with so i brought some little nail scissors that i'm just gonna make a tiny little hole with just big enough to poke the center of one of the rings through it's not gonna be very elegant probably but you know as long as it works <laughs> i'll be happy that is much better much better. Only thing is, it's inside out now, so I need to mind um, what side I put it on, but this looks good. Looks like it's gonna work. Look, 
There we go. Looks pretty good, I'd say. So, let's try it for real. undergarments done guys i can i can hardly believe i made this this is so far still from even that mock-up that i made where i was already like i can't believe i made this this is just really really cool i feel like this is or it comes across in any case as the most advanced sewing i have done so far i mean i even designed my wedding dress in a way so that I wouldn't have to bone it because I was terrified of doing boning but it was actually so easy to do. This pattern makes it super super simple to make 18th century stays and I am very glad that the sizing is good this time. I think I could have potentially gone down to a size 6 because I am hitting closed at some point. Um, and I could definitely tighten this even more. A 10 definitely would have been too big. So I ended up going from a 12 down to an eight, could have gone down to six. So if you're ever gonna make this, then be mindful of that. You're probably gonna have to size down quite a bit, but I love this. I love it so much. Just, just this, I already feel super historical looking. The silhouette is completely there, I look very conical, much more so than I have ever done. And I think this is gonna be absolutely perfect once I finish the dress, or once I even start making the dress. And I cannot wait to see how this will look with an entire outfit, the dress on top. It's gonna be amazing, guys. I am living dreams right here. <laughs> I am just very, very excited. And I have to say, I am glad that I decided to make it in this fabric, as it is gorgeous i mean it's very beautiful i am definitely gonna go back and rebind this yellow edge because <laughs> it looks a little bit silly now with the um half yellow half white bound edges but yeah i think the white looks great as well it's a little bit more toned down i also had to use a red ribbon on the front because i ran out of the white that i used in the back and on the shoulder straps but I kind of don't mind that either. I think it looks pretty nice with the red as well. <laughs> I'm glad that I got the synthetic boning and I didn't just go with the tie wraps and the duct taped tie wraps because I definitely feel like that added strength of the boning helps to give me that silhouette because I'm not very squishy. So I need something a little bit more sturdy to push me into a different shape. But yeah, I, I just, I absolutely love this. I can't wait to continue and start working on the dress and see it all come together. It's gonna be amazing. But this is where the undergarment section of this series ends. So I hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you have this pattern laying around and you've been putting it off, go do it. It is so much easier than you think. It is so much easier than I ever thought this could be. I mean, I made it pretty much in one go and the only problem I had was the sizing, so. If the sizing had been right, I would have been able to make this on my first try, which is pretty good, I dare say. It's a great pattern to learn or to begin, take your first steps in the corset making world. So yeah, definitely can recommend it if you ever wanted to try that. But I think this is where I'm going to end the video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed going on this journey with me, making my first ever pair of states. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the other underwear pieces, of course. If you did enjoy, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for the rest of this series. We're gonna finish this dress together, but also lots of beauty, fashion, and lifestyle content. If you would like to support me through Patreon or my merch store, there are links in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. There is another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you so much for watching once again, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!